Hi everyone, what if Kenya followed its constitution? That is a desire as we look at the laws that especially deal with character and duties required of government officials. This is part two. If you haven't had a chance, look at part one. Part two will look at 10 of them. What's the desire in all this? It's having at least some life satisfaction and this is measured by GDP per capita, uh, a measure of a country's economic output that accounts for its number of people. It tells you how prosperous a country feels to each of its citizens. Uh, it's having um, healthy life expectancy, freedom to make life choices, social support, generosity and absence of corruption. Why do I mention cultural aspects? Uh, have a look at the video that I did called Cultural Aspects That Slow Down Progress in Kenya and Africa. And one of them is giving preference to the employment of kin over non-kin is a normal expression of family responsibility and solidarity. Personal, family or private interests are placed before larger organizational or public interests. Another video I did called Colonization and Cultural Aspects that Affect How Kenya and Africa Runs Government uh, can give a clue in what we use more than uh, the constitution. So it says one of them is whiteness is the measure of all culture. White is right. Everything else is culture. We judge behavior by whether it conforms to whiteness or not. So back to the constitution. What is a constitution? A constitution is a set of rules that guides how a country, state, or other political organization runs. In the constitution of Kenya, we have a state office. State, of, state office means any of the following offices. The president, deputy president, cabinet secretary, member of parliament, judges and magistrates, member of a commission to which chapter 15 applies, holder of an independent office to which chapter 15 applies, member of a country, county assembly, governor or deputy governor of a county, or other member of the executive committee of a county government, attorney general, director of public prosecutions, uh, secretary to the cabinet, principal, secretary, chief of the Kenya Defense Forces, commander of a service of the Kenya Defense Forces, Forces, Director General of the National Intelligence Service, Inspector General and the Deputy Inspector Generals of the National Police Service, or an office established and designated as a state office by national legislation. So state officer means a person holding a state office. One of the things we talk about a lot is parliament. It's good to get an idea of what that is. It's a group of people who make or change its laws and decide what policies the country should follow. And a policy is a set of ideas or plan of what to do in particular situations that have been agreed on to officially by a group of people, a business organization, a government, or a political party. And so parliament has a national assembly, which is sometimes called lower house, which has elected members of parliament and the Senate, which is called upper house. So what's the responsibility of the leaders in, in the constitution? The guiding principles of leadership and integrity include selection on the basis of personal integrity, competence and suitability or election in free and fair election, objectivity and impartiality in decision making and in ensuring that decisions are not influenced by nepotism, favoritism, other improper motives or corrupt practices, selfless service based solely on public interest demonstrated by honesty in the execution of public duties and the declaration of any personal interest that may conflict with public duties accountability to the public for decisions and actions, and discipline and commitment in service to the people. Wow. So what is the conduct of state officers? The ones that I mentioned earlier. A state officer shall behave, whether in public and official life, in private life, or in association with other persons, in a manner that avoids any conflict between personal interests and public or official duties, compromising any public or official interest in favor of a personal interest, or demeaning the office the officer holds. Wow. A person who contravenes clause 1 or article 76, 77, or 78, 2 shall be subject to the applicable 
disciplinary uh, procedure for the relevant office and may in accordance with the disciplinary procedure referred to in paragraph a be dismissed or otherwise removed from office a person who has been dismissed or otherwise removed from office for a contravention of the provisions specified in clause 2 is disqualified from holding any other state office financial probity of state officers what does probity mean it means the quality of having strong moral principles a gift or donation to a state officer on a public or official occasion is a gift or donation to the republic and shall be delivered to the state unless exempted under an act of parliament a state officer shall not maintain a bank account outside kenya except in accordance with an act of parliament or seek or accept a personal loan or benefit in circumstances that compromise the integrity of the state officer Restriction on activities of state officers. A full-time state officer shall not participate in any other gainful employment. Any appointed state officer shall not hold office in a political party. A retired state officer who is receiving a pension from public funds shall not hold more than two concurrent remunerative positions as chairperson, director, or employee of a company owned or controlled by the state or a state organ. A retired state officer shall not receive remuneration from public funds other than as contemplated in Clause 3. What is the role of the National Assembly? The National Assembly deliberates on and resolves issues of concern to the people. What is the role of the Senate? The Senate represents the counties and serves to protect the interests of the counties and their governments. Qualifications and disqualifications for election as member of parliament satisfies any educational, moral, and ethical requirement prescribed by this constitution or by an act of parliament and a person is disqualified from being elected a member of parliament if the person is found in accordance with any law to have a mis misused or abused a state office or public office or in any way to have contravened chapter 6. Objects of devolution. The objects of devolution of government are to promote democratic and accountable exercise of power, to foster national unity by recognizing diversity, to give power of self-governance to the people and enhance the participation of the people in the exercise of the powers of the state and in making decisions affecting them, to recognize the right of communities to manage their own affairs and to further their development, to protect and promote the interests and rights of minorities and marginalized communities, to promote social and economic development and the provision of proximate, immediate, easily accessible services throughout Kenya, to ensure equitable sharing of national and local resources throughout Kenya to facilitate the decentralization of state organ organs, their functions and services from the capital of Kenya and to enhance checks and balances and the separation of powers. Lastly, county government. There shall be a county government for each county consisting of a county assembly and a county executive. Every county government shall decentralize its functions and the provision of its services to the extent that it is efficient and practicable to do so. And then there will be county executive committees. That is the county governor, the deputy county governor are the chief executive and deputy chief executives of the county respectively. There you have it. Thank you for joining me for part two. Join me in part three as we continue to look for at some aspects of the constitution. Don't forget to click on the subscribe button and also the bell on the right so that you can be notified when the new video comes in. Thank you. See you. Bye.